morning. Um, thank you all for attending our uh, regular Sunday service this morning. Um, as you know, we were chanting, and I'm on this night gym, um, and I kind of felt a good energy today. You know, everyone is like, you know, um, chanting all together, and this chanting is not just to read the words, but it also um, is a practice of interconnection. So as we, you know, try to meld our voice um, to, you know, concentrate not on your voice, but also all the voices that is surrounded, um, and try to meld it, try to blend it, um, your voice to everyone. So it kind of, you know, brings strength. It strengths as a sangha. And um, some of you have noticed, but the the minister's assistant kind of overlaps. You know, when I when I chant the first line, the minister's assistant overlaps. Mm -hmm. And like especially Ken, you know, doing. Um, it was overlapping, but it doesn't mean that she's, you know, um, trying to speed it up or crazy. <laughs> um, this is how, you know, I'm trained because as as you could see, if you open to ninety um, ninety three, so and um. There's an English tran translation provided. And um, so the first um, line says, I, est I established the vows on Excel and reached the highest path, Bodhi. So actually, this is one sentence. But the chanting, um, somebody has to start the chanting. That's why the, the leader, the, the chair leader, um, starts the first line, Gagun Cho Seigang. But technically, Gagun Cho Seigan Hishi Mujodo is one sentence. So that's why um, I asked the minister assistant to kind of overlap, to kind of um, connect the sentence together, or else it won't make sense. So um, this is how we um, chat. Um, so, you know, the minister assistant will overlap, but try to join together and then we will kind of you know um, gradually blend our voice together and it will naturally flow um, and so today that, that's not my topic um, today is um, last week I, I talked about how one of the three ways of listening in, um, in our tradition of Shin Buddhism which is to listen as if the Dharma is for you alone and that the Dharma, the, te the Buddha's teachings, um, is directed at each and every one of us. And um, in thinking about how to explain this idea, um, I thought about the difference between sympathy and empathy. And according to the Oxford English Dictionary, um, sympathy means feelings of pity and sorrow for someone else's misfortune. So uh, notes that it says you have these feelings for someone else. So that is sympathy. And empathy, uh, according to the dictionary, is the ability to try to understand and share the feelings of another. So this is empathy. And the point here is to share the feelings, um, which it in involves your trying to reflect uh, within yourself, what has occurred to others? You're trying to reflect. And I think this is the attitude that is needed um, when receiving the Dharma, the Buddha's teachings. The Dharma is not just you know, a set of ideas um, that you try to understand objectively, but um, we must internalize it, internalize. And we must see ourselves in the dark. So um, the issue is, is not what the Dharma literally means, but what it means to you in particular, what it means to me. 
for example, um, one of the fundamental teaching is impermanence. It's impermanence, uh, which literally means everything changes, uh, nothing lasts forever, um, and all is transient. If impermanence um, is taken objectively, it is just an interesting philosophical idea. It's just an interesting idea. And since um, impermanence is not in, in, internalized, you, um, you may just say, oh, I understand. I understand impermanence. Um, which, where um, you, you are the subject of the sentence, and impermanence is the object, but it's separated. I understand the attitude of I understand um, impermanence. However, when you internalize impermanence um, and try to see yourself in the uncontrollable nature of impermanence, then your mind will say, I am impermanence. I am impermanence. So the subject, I, and the object in permanence becomes one. That's internalizing. Um, the objective way of you know, thinking means that you may understand with your head, but not with your heart. So when impermanence finally does affect you, it will be hard to believe in impermanence and even more harder to accept it. Then, um, the fact that we are all impermanent will cause great stress and suffering. But, um, if you see impermanence nothing, not as something outside yourself, but as part of you, it will be much more easier to adjust to it, adjust to impermanence. In one of the oldest Buddhist texts, the Suttanipata Sutra, um, it states, It is the course of our human existence that we are born, therefore we must die. Birth and death are part of the same realm. There is no escape or alternative course for each and every one of us. So if you read this sutra objectively, it seems just negative. You know, death. Um, We are born, therefore we must die. So it just seems a negative. Uh, but when we um, internalize these words, internalize impermanence, it raises questions of if this is so, how can I live? If this is true, how can I react to the truth? With the truth? And these questions are actually, you know, not easy to answer. Um, but sincerely asking these questions can open your mind um, to seeing things that makes our in our lives even more meaningful. And what seems so negative at first is, um, in fact, quite positive. So. Uh, we should not simply dismiss things as negative and positive, but um, think about them you know, deeply and internalize them so that we see how they are interrelated. How they interrelate. And I think that um, the listening to the Dharma with the attitude uh, that it is for you alone is, is one of the most important attitude and practice um, in our tradition because it makes empathy a part of our lives. So please join me in Gasho. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz. Namo Amida Butz.